This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, here along with Matt Allen, and together we are your KTAR car guys, heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car repair experience. So if you got car questions, we've got car answers, and we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. And you can also text questions to 411-923, but uh, we always like phone calls. So anyhow, today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, fact or fiction, open phones and text, of course. You know, I always say fact or fiction. You know, we never <laughs> we get around to it. it. I just said, I <laughs> I'm thinking, lying to you. I was thinking to myself, oh, I Are guess we doing... we'll come up with something. Yeah, yeah. Fact so. or fiction, Brie got her truck fixed and it's Ooh. back today. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. <laughs> Fixed was the key word there. Fixed. It's in the parking lot. Ha! Okay, I lost that one. Still, I had a fifty-fifty fixed chance. Is the key I had a fifty-fifty chance. So anyway, so uh, fact or fiction? We'll come up with something. Open phones and text. And uh, you know, I think there's people listening to the radio right now. Maybe they're even driving their car, and maybe they're looking down at their dashboard, and there's a check engine light, and they've had that sucker on ignore for a week or two because they're like, what do I do with that thing? What does it mean anyway? It's turned on. Maybe the bulb will just burn out, and I'll get lucky. You know? Not. And so, in, and I literally, Matt, I've been in cars where there's black electrical tape right over that check engine light, you know? And so... When can you ignore that check engine light? And I don't know that you can ever ignore it, but I'm, I'm throwing that out there as a question because there is times when you can ignore it. Do I have to deal with it today? You know, I got a lot of stuff going on. You know, if my my accountant calls me in tax season and he says my check engine light's on, I'm like, just don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, right. When you're all done with tax season, we'll talk about your check engine light. But what are some of those situations, Matt, when you can ignore it? And, 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 and when it turns on, all well, the race of thoughts that come to your mind, oh, gosh, this is going to cost thousands of dollars or it's going to be no big deal. Well, well, you, know. you, you can never ignore it. I mean, at some point, you you have to do something, and you can get to the point where you can, with some help from somebody, you might be able to determine that you can ignore it. But just driving down the road, if the check engine light comes on, you should not ignore it until you get some advice. So I, I, I so really, the answer is never. But if you want to rephrase the question, say, can I keep driving my car, or can I? Because you asked me, Dave, would you drive out of town with the check engine light on? I said, sure, I would. Depends on what the problem is, and we're not going to know that from behind the steering wheel. Well, I don't want to skip over a point here because I, I went out there, I, and Tom says, what are you guys talking about today? So we're talking about check engine light. He goes, oh, good. I got one of those on in my car. He said it's the uh, maintenance re- – well, what did he say? Maintenance right? required light. Yeah, maintenance required light. And so – Maybe we should talk about, we're talking about check engine light, but maybe what the heck is that? Maybe, you know, because so, for me, my check engine light is a little picture of a, the the silhouette of an engine. And I'm thinking most people out there have no idea what the little silhouette of an engine looks like because they don't know what an engine looks like. And in that silhouette of an engine, <laughs> that engine design has not been around in 30 years. You know, they didn't right. look like that anymore. Who knows what they, what they look like. So the check engine light is the, is this the signal to you, the driver, that the computer has detected a malfunction in the engine management system, and ultimately it's going to be a problem that can affect the emissions output of the car. But that check engine light, I don't know if, if, if um, I don't think there's a universal symbol yet across all manufacturers. Some still just have the simple word, two words in, in bold print that says check engine. Some are uh, the silhouette of an engine, but they're amber in color. So it's not, the red, it's 100% not the red. 100% of the time. It's not the red light. Or it might say service engine soon. Uh, but those are going to be the, the ones that are tied to. To, it's going to affect the way the car is going to run, and this is all put in there for the help of, uh, you know, regulation to reduce emissions. That's that's the goal here. Very sophisticated. So the car is always doing a test of itself, and it's going to turn that light on when it sees a problem. And there's hundreds of problems and thousands of parameters that can be met to make the light come on. So then the question is, what do I need to do about it? That's where where we come in to, to ignore it. So back to, would you drive out of town with the light on? Yeah, I would if it was an evap leak, for example. That, that's gonna, that's a, and that's one of the common 
failures. But would I drive out of town if I had a rich fuel condition or a torque converter clutch solenoid or a um, misfire? Heck no. No, no. We wouldn't bother. So you could ignore after you've gained some knowledge by talking to your shop. And we know this, and so we didn't mention it before the show, but if that check engine light is flashing, that is the absolute don't ignore symbol. Yes. <laughs> if it's flashing, there is a problem. There's a, there's a significant, significant misfire going on, and you will cause damage uh, to keep driving a car like that. So uh, we talked a little bit, Davis. Is, is Do I need to freak out, or can I ignore it? Don't ever freak out. Be calm, be cool, be collected <laughs> if you can. So if the light's flashing, definitely don't ignore it. Call your shop and get in. If the light is comes on and you don't have any symptoms, just the light came on, um, gosh, it doesn't sound different. It doesn't feel different. Doesn't it smell drives different. It doesn't smell. That's another sensory we didn't talk about. It doesn't smell different. There's nothing changing. It's probably not as pressing, but you still need to get on the phone to get to the point to decide, do we need to fix it right now? Um, if, you know, If your budget doesn't allow, can I wait or how long can I wait? Um, or, or again, get it right in. But now what's the process in the shop? I, I mean, I think the process starts as a consumer right as soon as that light comes on is when you need to put your memory well, bank on. Well, one of the things that happens in, in, some, of the, you know, in some of the major chains for auto parts, they'll do a courtesy or kind of a free check engine light deal you can go in there and uh, some kid comes out plugs in your car and he goes it's it could be this this or this because that's from a printout and, and that kind of information and i think matt i think people do that because they're like ah it's gonna be a good big process to go down to my my auto shop now first of all if you got a relationship with a good auto shop and, and you've taken time to establish a relationship which is why we recommend that is because you can call them up and say hey i got this check engine light come on i really don't have any time to deal with it this week can you let me know if it's serious or not? And, you know, I know at Virginia Auto Service, you guys will have somebody swing by, you'll scan and say, you know what, it is not. Let's put you on the calendar for next Tuesday. Right. You know, you know that type of thing. We don't have to freak out. We don't have to get a rental car. We don't have to do all these things. So I think people go to the auto parts store, and sometimes it sets them up for a little bit of dissatisfaction later because that's only just like a little crumb of information. And it may point in the right direction of, you know, it, it is a gas cap, possibly a gas cap problem. No reason to freak out there. You could ignore it for a week or two. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the end of the world. So, but... Going to the auto shop, what are some, some, some things you want to talk about there? Well, what do you mean? When they, when they come into the shop, how, how we're going to handle the car or, or the difference between the two? Yeah, what are the steps? So I'm, I'm a consumer. My check engine light turns on. I don't know what to do with it. So I, 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 I call up Virginia Auto Service. Hey, Matt, I've been getting oil changes for you guys for years. Hey, I, check engine light's on. What should I do about it? Okay, so I think the first thing you should be doing, you're driving the car and the car acts up. That's when you need to go, uh-oh, something mm -hmm. changed, and you just go back and keep your memory. You know, Take your notes to yourself, whether they're mental, whether you write them down or get out your iPhone, whatever, and think to yourself, how was I driving? Was I turning when that light came on? Was I accelerating up the hill? Did I just go through a puddle of water? Just try and think of the totality of the circumstances. If you could take a, a two-minute video you know, recapture what just happened for the minute prior and the minute after. Yeah, did I just get gas? Did I just get gas? Did any of these things happen? And, and you want to have that information, and that's what you're going to bring us to the shop because we're going to get at the counter and we're going to say, Sally, okay, you're here for your check engine light. What happened? And that's why we're going to have that conversation. So now the process is the technician should then be, he's going to get that work order. It's going to have all these descriptions of what happened. We're going to go out to the parking lot. Depending on what kind of car it is, I mean, if it's a Toyota or a Mercedes or something, we're not going to bring our big giant laptop and all this computer equipment out there. But we're going to bring something, maybe similar to what they have at AutoZone, and we're going to plug that into the car because that's the most basic tool. It's not going to tell you everything. It's a quick glimpse. That's all it is. It's like it's like getting part of the address, mm. you know, when you want to go somewhere. You only know the street name, but you don't know the street number or whatever, the house number. So. We're going to find out what those codes are. We're not going to clear them. We're just going to document them. We're going to go drive the car three, four, five miles maybe, see if we can get the symptom to act up. If it does, we're going to probably come right back to the shop. If it doesn't, we'll, we'll do that test drive. Then now the car's in the shop. Now we're going to get out the big machine. We're going to hook up the, you know, the, the factory-specific scan tool and go through, find out what those codes are, document them. 
Now, and, you, and the other thing, don't lie to us and tell us that light just came on the other day because... Oh, your car will tell on your you. Your car is a narc, okay? <laughs> we know exactly how fast you were going when that check engine light came on, what the throttle load was. We know a lot of that information that is all stored mm. uh, in the computer. So now we're going to, you know, let's just say we have a lean condition code, maybe a PO, uh, gosh, 174, I, I think I forgot. Uh, under the moment of pressure here. but uh, So we're going to open the hood. We might find a vacuum leak. If it's a Chevy truck, we might go dial in right to a common area. If it's an import car, you know, a German import, we might be looking at the air boots. We're going to look around for, for leaks and stuff. And then we're probably going to clear the codes and go for another drive. We might make an adjustment, might do a test, and then we have to present a repair. I mean, that's a it sounded fast, and I'm rattling. I'm sure I missed a lot of steps. That's 45 minutes of work. It That's takes not a, a plug-in in, yeah. in the lot. There, there's a lot more that goes to it. And and so I think people, it's a little bit mis. There's a misconception that happens when they go in and they get the quick plug-in and all that stuff. And, and I do find more and more customers have their own little machine to do that. And for yeah. the people that can digest some of the information, it may not be a bad idea. To, so they can say, do I got to deal with it today or take it to the shop next week? You know, that type of thing. Anyhow, when we come back, we've got David, Joe, and Don, and a couple more open lines. At 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTR. We're talking about check engine lights or anything related to your car. Give us a call. We'll be right back. Matt and I share car repair tips weekly to help you keep your car safely on the road, and a few of them are easy to do. Yep, you're right, Dave. And one of the easiest is to have a dependable battery that you can trust to get you started no matter what the conditions. Interstate batteries are what we trust at Bumper to Bumper Radio. In fact, they're what we use at our own shops for our customers. If you're like most people, your car is one of your most valuable investments. Make sure you take care of that investment with the power necessary to get you where you need to be. Interstate batteries are America's number one replacement brand with a factory fresh guarantee, and they're easy to find at good shops everywhere. Cars or trucks, Interstate has you covered with long life and performance in our harsh desert climates with products like Megatron Plus. It carries a 30-month free replacement and a six-year performance guarantee. Interstate Batteries, no battery lasts longer. Check them out at interstatebatteries.com. Hi, I'm Kurt Morgan, owner of Shadow Mountain Auto Service in Phoenix. I'm also a college automotive instructor, and I've been a technician for over 30 years. In that time, I've seen all kinds of games and gimmicks in the auto repair business, the worst of which seems to be associated with transmissions. I think it's because, to most, including technicians, the inside of a transmission is a mystery. So when one of our valued customers has a transmission problem, we send them straight to Tri-City Transmission. No games, no gimmicks. That's Tri-City Transmission. There's nothing more important than family. Hi, Kurt Rock for Kurt's Auto Repair. Family owned and operated and bumper to bumper radio preferred. We've been taking care of Valley families and their auto care needs with a perfect better business record for over 27 years. Come experience the difference our ASC Master Techs can make for you and your family at Kurt's Auto Repair. Just east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell Road or online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic. If your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. I'm not sure I recognize that tune. Is that before my time or? No, I don't know. I was thinking some Judas Priest at first for a second. I t I'm still listening. <laughs> Who? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Dave Riccio here along with Matt Allen. And we talked a little bit about check engine lights in the first segment. And if you've got a question about a check engine light, that's fine. We would love to talk about that. If you've got a question about a vibration, that's fine. I'm looking here at some of the text people are asking about transmission service. If you've got a question about that, that's fine. Anything related to your car, go to the phone, pick up the dial. I think... I was talking to a customer the other day. He said, I, I was going to call the show and ask this question, but I was nervous that I would lock up, you know, because I'd be on the phone and, and, and I couldn't ask my question. But give us a call. We'll work you through it. 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. And if you are the shy type, like these texts I got right here, 411-923. Hey, did you uh, see who's back? We have yeah. B-Tech B -Tech George. George. <laughs> hey, B-Tech George. 
So anyhow, well, let's go with, uh, we've got Joe and David. Uh, let's go with David and Buckeye. He's got a 2013 Kia Optima. How can we help you, David? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. How are you doing today? I uh, My check engine light went off, and I went and got it checked out, and I was told there was a high-pressure fuel pump was going bad. And the only difference in my vehicle was it took a, li- a couple of more seconds to start, and I don't get that get up and go when I'm doing 65 or 70 miles an hour to pass somebody on the highway. David, um, David do you know what the co- do you know what the code number was? I don't recall. Um, I took it to a mechanic I've done business with before. Uh-huh. Now I haven't gotten it fixed because it's nine hundred dollars. With the parts, real expensive plus the labor, it's almost a thousand dollars. And he said it was okay to drive it a while without it being a problem. And it's not being a problem, but I'm just a little weary. And and I thought maybe I could run it by you guys and see what you thought. Yeah, I mean, Dave, you got a thought on it? I I, I do for sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just I I'm thinking I go with what you got. Well, well first of all, everybody knows he's talking about. It. He says the high pressure fuel pump. This is another one of these newer cars that has direct fuel injection. So it's a high-pressure fuel pump, much like a diesel. It's got a low-pressure or a feeder pump that brings fuel up to the engine. And this new type of fuel injection, direct fuel injection, requires fuel pressure to be around 1,500 pounds of pressure. So there's a mechanical high-pressure fuel pump that sometimes is driven off the camshaft with a tappet or sometimes it's driven by a chain, and that's what gets that pressure real high. But there's not a code that says, that's the other uh, misconception, the code says my fuel pump is bad. Yeah. No, it does not. There's no code that says that. It tells you an area of a failure or a... Uh, uh, in this case, uh, it could be it could be a lean code because there's not enough fuel getting delivered to the, to the yeah. combustion. Or it could be a lean code because the thing is so packed with carbon because that's what happens to direct fuel injection engines. So I really want to know what what the code is and what the description, not what the problem could be. It's so important. If you are going to be that person that goes and gets the code read, get the number of the code. It's going to be like a P and then three, uh, four more digits. Well, his question was, you know, you know, can I ignore it? I'm kind of getting leery about it. I, I think that any time the check engine light comes on or you're starting to have it a problem, it's not a long term to ignore anything. I think at some point, you know, if you do have a problem that's not urgent, that's good, but but sock away some money to get that thing fixed because we don't want to ignore it because I think at the end of the day, if we start ignoring problems in our cars, what we end up with is cars that deteriorate faster. And, again, I don't know why this pump is failing, but if it has a catastrophic failure, you already know you have to spend $1,000. So if you have the money, it's not going to hurt you too bad. Fix it because the problem is if you have a catastrophic failure of a pump, it's going to pump material. When that thing blows apart, now you might be replacing fuel injectors that are not cheap. You might be doing some other work as a result of waiting. That would be a consequence that you may not want to face. Hey, thanks for the call, David. 602-277-5827. Chris and Robert have jumped on the line, and then Roger. But we're going to go with Joe in Chandler. He's got a 2010 Honda Accord Cross Tour. How can we help you, Joe? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hey, thanks for taking my call. You bet. Yeah, it's a it's a Honda Accord with a 3.5 liter V6 mm-hmm. that has Honda's variable cylinder management system on it. And uh, I did have the ch- the flashing uh, check engine light, and I uh, I had the I have a code reader, and I looked at the code, and it's P0303, which translates to cylinder three misfire. Mm-hmm. And um, I did have some service on it by the dealer, and he took care of me. But I'm just seeing what I believe is actually a systemic problem with these variable cylinder management engines from Honda and maybe from others. And um, I was wondering if you guys were seeing anything with the uh, 3.5 liter V6 in your business. I haven't seen an overwhelming tremendous amount of uh, uh, problems with it uh, that I see. I mean, I think... In general, I see it. You know, I see the these Chevrolets coming in with issues. You know, yeah, uh, the Trailblazer. We see some Toyotas and Fords, though. The, I haven't. Uh, you know, I I suspect that um, that Joe has been on Google mm-hmm. because there is not a systemic issue. But we can always say we go to the internet. We can always find a club to join that's got the same problems that 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 we have or that we we think we had. 
But a P0303, again, is cylinder three, variable valve timing is is be more likely to infect the entire the entire bank bank mm-hmm. one or bank two it's not likely to be isolated down to a single cylinder like a three zero three and I think he was referring to maybe the cylinder cutout deal you know where they shut off for you know that yeah. kind of thing yeah it, it, exactly but it's it, it it should not necessarily isolate it to a single cylinder sure so but you need you know these everybody thinks a misfire code is easy yeah it's really easy if it's a spark plug or the coil yeah the easy <laughs> those are those, those are the easy things we check those right away because a lot of yeah. times it is but there, there's more to it. You know, we got a valve problem. You know, that's yeah. that's a little harder to diagnose. You yeah, know? you could have had a bad uh, coil go bad and had, and, and and then still had had, a, had it cause a problem, burn a valve, you replace the coil, it's still got a burnt valve. I mean, misfires are seem to be easy, but not always. They can sneak up and get you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so much for the call, Joe. We are going to go with Robert Dodge Pickup Transmission, Litchfield Park. How can we help you? Robert, you're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You hey, bet. I had a question. I have a Dodge Ram 3500. It's a 99. And I had some problems with it. And I started to flip and between gears. And so realized it's a little slow and I had to be. Uh, somebody else is driving the vehicle. And instead of flipping dramatically, and I don't want it to go overboard. Because I was just actually looking for a good shop in the West Valley to take it to somebody reputable. Sure. Hey, um, Robert, we had a really hard time hearing a lot of that breaking up, but if you just go visit bumper to bumper com, that's where you'll find a list of all the shops that Dave and I endorse, and there should be one close to you there. If they're not close, just give them a call, and maybe they can even refer you to one. Yeah, and the, the thing is, as far as convenience on a transmission shop, the bigger the purchase, the further you should be willing to drive. You know, don't let location. I see people pick a bad shop because it's next door to their work, you know. So anyhow, we'll be right back taking phone calls, 602-277-5827. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys, on Bumper to Bumper Radio. It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with a repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. The right to choose a repair facility is yours, not the insurance companies. We work with all insurance companies, but we work for you. Campus Body Salon, bumper-to-bumper radio approved and independently family-owned and operated since 1973. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Good friends, good golf, all for a great cause. It's Bunker to Bunker, the golf show's sixth annual fall frolic, Saturday, September 30th at the legendary Arizona Biltmore Golf Club. Come join us as we celebrate the beginning of fall with our two-person scramble benefiting Phoenix Children's Hospital. It's a fantastic day of fun, food, golf, and prizes on the beautiful Lynx course, all for just $89, a great value. You even receive a free coupon for a second round of golf. Space is limited. Register today at BunkerGolf.com. That's BunkerGolf.com. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20 plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Arizona's news station. News station. KTAR. On air. 92.3 FM. Online at KTAR.com. And streaming live on the KTAR News app. Your breaking news and traffic. Now. Good morning. It's 1130. I'm Tom Perumian. Here's our top story. Officials say the death toll from this week's magnitude 7.1 earthquake in central Mexico has climbed to 305. Civil Defense Chief Luis Felipe Puente sent out a tweet on Saturday saying 167 of those deaths were in Mexico City alone. 
Longtime friends and advisors of Senator John McCain say they're not surprised by his decision to oppose a last-ditch Republican effort to overhaul the nation's health care law. McCain objects to the legislation in part because Senate GOP leaders want to vote without holding hearings or debate. The Arizona senator has made returning to, quote, regular order in the Senate a priority since he's come back to Congress following a cancer diagnosis. And dozens of anxious mayors are arriving to meet in Puerto Rico's governor's mansion to present a long list of things they urgently need after Hurricane Maria devastated the island. The mayors say they're worried about hospitals, a home for the elderly, and bridges that have collapsed. Let's get a check on traffic. We go to Mike Daniels in the KTAR Traffic Center. Well, thanks, Tom. We have a crash off to the side, 10 westbound at 27th Avenue. We're back at 15th Avenue in McDowell to watch out for. And a wreck in El Mirage at Thunderbird and Dysart. This part brought to you by Smokey's Garage Door. Is your garage door squeaking, rattling, or just not working? The pros at Smokey's Garage Door will get you back on track fast. Free estimates and same-day service available. Just click SmokeysGarageDoor.com. I'm Mike Daniels, KTAR News. Cleared today with a high of 87, going down to a low of 62 overnight. Just about the same for tomorrow, a few degrees warmer. And then warmer on Monday with a high of 90. Right now, 83 degrees in Mesa. Weather brought to you by Howard Air. I'm Tom Perumian on Arizona's news station, KTAR News. When you want Arizona's breaking news and traffic, it's KTAR News, 92.3 FM on your radio. And when you want the latest news, weather, and sports on TV, it's 12 News. Arizona gets its news from 12 News and KTAR News, 92.3 FM. Hi, I'm Dave Riccio, owner of Tri-City Transmission. Well, you may have come to know us for being a transmission expert. What you may not know is that our customers regularly ask us why we don't perform repairs to the rest of the vehicle. You guys are so great. Why work on just the transmission? Well, the request became hard to ignore, and three years ago, we began to build an infrastructure to perform general automotive repair. We weren't going to do general repair if we couldn't be great at it. So in 2013, we began the soft opening of Tri-City Auto Repair on Smith Road. We brought on ASC Master Technicians to work side-by-side with our Master Transmission Technicians. The combination of the best in both of these trades has created a synergy that allows us not only to fix your transmission, but to service and repair your whole car and to do it well. Let's face it, the modern car has become so integrated. We believe all of our expert knowledge puts us ahead of the curve. Find us at TriCityTransmission.com or TempeAutoRepairShop.com. That's TempeAutoRepairShop.com. Hi, Lisa Henry with Russ Lyon Sotheby's International Realty. Have you been thinking maybe the time is right to move, but you're not sure if you have enough equity in your home or if it really is a good time? Well, home values have increased significantly over the past few years, and interest rates are still historically low. For how long? No one knows. But for every 1% increase in the interest rate, the result is about a 10% loss in purchasing power. So it might be a really great time to sell your home and either upsize or downsize to a new home while the interest rates are still low. Contact me via my website at lisareneehenry.com or direct at 480-330-9530 for a no-obligation market valuation on your home and to hear about our global online marketing plan designed to sell your home quickly for top dollar. Again, that's lisareneehenry.com, 480-330-9530. Come experience the difference a truly customer-focused real estate agent can make. Wow, I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> We're getting the the mixes in the music today. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, along with my friend Dave Riccio here, and we're here to help you every single Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. And so for some of the new listeners out there, maybe people just kind of flipping the dial today, what is Bumper to Bumper Radio? Well, it's, it's these two yahoos <laughs> coming in I and, resent that. And, uh, and, and talking about cars. Dave and I both own auto repair shops. Dave's a transmission and transmission specialist that does general repair as well. And I'm Virginia Auto Service downtown. But bumper to bumper besides the show on Saturday is a, I guess, would you call it a network, Dave? It's a network. It's a network. It's a group of other shop owners, of, of people that own shops, of just Good guys that know how to take care of customers and fix cars right and do good for you. And they're people that Dave and I endorse and have no problem sending you to their shop to get your car fixed. 
The other thing is that we always talk about broken cars and check engine lights and when do I need to change my oil and what happened to my timing belt. What we don't often talk about and what everybody doesn't know, the other part of Bumper to Bumper Radio, is there's a handful of body shops here that we that we endorse. And there's, I guess there's two kinds of people, those who have had a wreck and those that are going to have a wreck. And uh, if you're one of, you are one of those, uh, you should visit the Bumper to Bumper Radio website and check out our body shops and find the one in your neighborhood, maybe one near your office and put their phone number in your glove box this afternoon, go write it on the paperwork. And, and Dave, I know you've had some experience with a body shop lately, once by choice and once not by choice <laughs> and uh and he's on board with the bumper to bumper family now right he is and there's there's a gentleman i know that i've known since i was in the fourth grade you know he was he was a volunteer leader in the in, in the youth program i was a part of you know i was a kid he was a leader and uh i've up there at durango <laughs> yeah right <laughs> not that one <laughs> So okay, I got Leo Petrozell, I've I've known this guy for years, and he's been in, you know the body. He's a campus auto body, and and they just signed up with Bumper to Bumper Radio. And you heard the commercial during the break. And this, uh, I took my car there literally a couple months ago, and I had dings and scratches. And I just bought the car. And I'm like, just make it look sweet, but I don't want to spend a ton of money. And they kind of waited out, and they came up with some options, and they made it look all sweet, which was great, right? So I'm all proud of my car. Uh, it's worth getting, you know, I get it washed every week and waxed every so often. And guess what? I had a single car accident in the gas station. <laughs> so, <laughs> those uh, concrete, I mean, those, those steel pipes filled with cement don't. They don't move it. There's no flex at all. <laughs> no so flex. I drive my car down to campus and, uh, and I talk to Aaron down there. And I said, I said, Aaron, I mean, you guys just painted the side of the truck. This has got to be a warranty, right? <laughs> he just laughed at me. So uh, everything I everything I just spent I just very quickly undone by, by a trip to the gas station and I was like it was one of those deals where I'm kind of on the phone and I'm Seriously? going around the gas pump because the pump's out of order and all of a sudden I feel like the the rear axle just got ripped out of the back of my car and I'm like oh that can't be good and it is not good at all so, so kids if you're listening put down the cell phone <laughs> while you're driving it was it, it was hands free but oh, okay. still I mean your you're, mind's you're not yeah, yeah exactly. I so, so wel welcome aboard, Leo, in Campus uh, Body Salon. I hope I said that right. Where are they? They are uh, basically on Curry right off the 202 in uh, McClintockish area in uh, fantastic body shop. I was real happy the first go around, and I'm certain I'll be real happy the second go around. But Leo's been in the in the body business ever since I met him in fourth grade. So you know, he knows auto body. I, you know, and I, now that we start talking about this, I was into Volkswagens when I was like 16 years old in, in LeSueur car companies down there on Curry. Oh, yeah. And I swear I've been in that shop years ago and had a bug painted or something. I remember going down there and, you know, because they're in that college area and around the campus, obviously, with the name. And, and uh, so I bet they're fixing a lot of students' cars and and stuff too, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember being in there years ago. Yeah, and one of the things you know in his ad, he talks about insurance companies, and you, you know, you don't have to go where your insurance company recommends. You can, you should pick a body shop that you want to go to, and you're totally in charge of that. And 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 I like that fact because they're not all created equal. And so these guys really go out of their way. They're they're a professional modern body shop with a family style feel when you go in there. So you're gonna meet Leo's sons back there. Uh, Aaron, I call him A.A. Ron, you know, because of that, that whole deal. And then Todd, but they do a fantastic job. And, and uh, I've been sending people there for years. So anyhow, we got phone calls now. We got to get We do. To. Let's go with, we've got Roger, we've got Chris, we've got Mark, and a couple open lines at 602-277-5827. And then we're going to get some of these texts. Roger with a 2008 uh, diesel. How can we help you? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Thanks, guys, for taking my call. You bet. I've got, I've got a 2008 Dodge that I bought used. Uh, the turbo was replaced because it was still under manufacturer's warranty. But since then, I, the engine light came on, and I took it to the dealer, and they said that I needed the DPF filter changed. I said, okay, go ahead and do that, and I did that. And I've got a place up north, and I'd get up by about Prince Wells, and all of a sudden it would it just – the it would like when it's regen and and it would speed up slow down next thing you know i had no power at all the motor didn't shut off so i would pull over the side of the road wait for about a couple minutes start it back up puff of smoke and go out and did that and i took it back to the dealer about four times or five times 
and they kept checking on the computer and said, well, it says it's a DPF, DPF, but it was a new one put in. Since then, I was making the turn in Mesa, and it the car just dead stopped. All the lights on the panel were on, but I couldn't get it started, so I towed, had it towed back to the dealer. Then they said, oh, you need a computer on it. So they put the new computer on it. And then when that happened about three days ago, I'm driving in Mesa, and I make a right-hand turn just on a street going five miles an hour, and the motor just dead stops again. No lights on, anything. The engine light didn't come on, stopped, barely missed the car. So I waited a second, turned it back on, and the ignition came back on, but no engine light. But the motor just died on me. Mm. Well, the, you know, the, the one thing I like about not, not that this sounds like a fun situation at all, but he's been sticking with the same place. And, and that's good because we've had multiple issues. But I think this is a point we need to maybe elevate this thing a little bit because it seems like a lot of trips back, and they may be all unrelated, but I, I kind of got a feeling, you know, some of this stuff is related. But maybe we need to take it a step higher up there over the dealership, maybe get a hold of the, the guy that runs the service department or the, the general manager and just say, hey, I got this truck that keeps breaking down. I can't trust this truck, and, I, and I'm losing faith, and I'm starting to get nervous about some of the things I paid for for repair. And, and that's, that stuff's not cheap. No. He's talking about He's spending a bunch of money on this stuff, and we still got this, you know, sound, what sounds like some similar problems. Is it all related? Isn't it all related? But but this thing needs to get to the, the – you know the lead tech in this in this deal, and they need it. You need to give them the truck and say, "I'll take it back when it's fixed," kind of thing. And so, but that needs to be. That's not just going to be the the little service rider. We need to go a notch higher. Yeah, and try and make an appointment to do that. You know, the best thing: be nice, don't barge in the office. He doesn't sound like the kind of guy that's going to get all yeah, no, cranked up. Or sounded anything. very reasonable. But that, but that, that's definitely not the way to go. But just just make an appointment. Tell them you'd like to set aside a half hour. They can, uh, you know, sit with you and, and work through it. Yeah, just and get all those, have all those invoices together. They're going to have records of all that. So, you know, I did this, and then I still got this going on. So It reminds me of one other thing real quick, Dave. No matter what, whenever you go to the repair shop, whether it's a, a recheck or you have to go back, always get a receipt. Even if there's no charge, you want to memorialize the visit. Just have documentation of it. What did you do? Why did you do? What was the problem? Right. I thought you were going somewhere else with that, but when I get a chance, I'm going to come back to that. So anyhow, thanks for the call, Roger, 602-277-5827. Let's go with Mark and Chandler on a 2003 Cadillac DeVille. How can we help you, Mark? You're on Bumper to Bumper Radio. Matt, Dave, thanks for taking my call. I'm hoping you bet. That will help me relieve some of my frustration because I'm at a point where I'm ready to scrap this car, write it off, but before I do, I'm going to take a baseball bat to it and light it on fire. Well, they do <laughs> those charity events at least. You know, Get full somebody. coverage and put a for steel sign on it, and uh, it'll go away. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I, I've had to have the thing towed twice this week, and this is what happens. 2003 Cadillac DeVille, 140,000 miles. Car drives, get to work, um, try to get into the car to leave work, won't start. Roll it around a little bit, get it on the tow, get it to the shop, roll it off the truck, car starts. What do you mean it doesn't start? What does that mean? Quant um, cranks and won't start? or all, like it, all the power is on. It's got a brand new battery in it. Uh, it's the, the, the dash and the lights and does the it, headlights. Does it, does it crank over like it's out of gas, or does it do nothing when you turn the key? Does nothing. Okay, so it's dead. Okay. Well, not, not power dead. Box, I got you. No, it won't turn over. That's what we would call a cr uh, no crank, no start. And so I, I took it into the shop. They couldn't uh, get it to um, do what it was doing. So took it back to work. Does the very same thing. Roll it off the truck. It starts up. This time around, when they took a look at it, they were able to get it to do what it's been doing, which is just that dead start. And their perspective is that there's an electronics issue that is related either to ignition, um, starter, or just a general, you know, wiring type of situation. And but without bringing it in and either spending significant dollars either in diagnosis or replacing parts that may or may not be real, um, the fix, I'm not sure what this is. Well, that's all you can do. You've either got to diagnose it or you got to guess. You got that. That's you know, it's one of the two. 
I would suggest next time it goes to the shop, just leave it. If it starts up, just say, guys, hey, have your mechanic drive it home, have whatever. I'm going to get a rental car. I'm going to do what I need to do. Otherwise, I'm thinking maybe just try a different set of keys. You might have a security issue. Mm -hmm. it, it could be something in the key. It may not. But uh, if you can get it, if you have a second key, use one. Otherwise, you just got to. Right, it's gonna have to bite the bullet. And it's it's one of those it's this is one of those frustrating items, you know, that, that, that we come to and you know, okay, the first time we we took it to the shop and it left and all that stuff, but it is something where you need to leave it there and, and talk to the shop because there's different grades of shops and there's different levels of technicians and and say, hey, is this something that you guys want to look into? You want to take on? Do you feel comfortable with it? We'll get get to an answer. And some may say, you know, no. And some may say, yeah, absolutely, but we need this, this, and this in order to get this thing fixed. So go down there, have a conversation with them uh, because you're, you're getting frustrated, you know, but your frustration is going to keep going if you keep getting a tow truck every third day. I mean, you're going to go nuts, and it is going to have a first steel sign on it. So anyhow, when we come back, we've got time for a couple more calls at 602-277-5827. And we're going to get these texts. You're listening to Matt and Dave, your KTR Car Guys, on Bumper to Bumper Radio. <laughs> It sounds like they've just had the accurate automotive experience. We're family-owned and operated and have served the Mesa, Tempe, Gilbert communities for over 22 years. We focus on building long-lasting relationships and, oh yeah, listening to you so that we can understand, meet, and exceed your expectations. One location, 14 bays, 88 years of automotive expertise, and a passionate commitment to customer service and excellence. My name is Lee Weatherby, and I approve this message because it's true. We love what we do, and we want to do it for you. Accurate Automotive, the home of friends serving friends. Having an accident is stressful. Dealing with the repair process shouldn't be. Hi, Leo Petrozella for Campus Body Salon. We've taken the stress out of collision repair since 1973, and here's a couple of tips to de-stress your repair. Make your own choice. Some insurance companies try to convince you that you must use their approved shop for your repair. Not true. Arizona state law allows you to choose the facility that's right for you. Beware of the cheapest estimate. Typically, it's the one from the insurance company cutting corners to trim costs or focusing on appearance only. At Campus Body Salon, appearance is important, but structural integrity and safety are even more critical. Campus Body Salon, independent, family-owned and operated, and bumper-to-bumper -bumper radio approved. Check out our Cash for Your Crash program where we pay you 10% off of your repair up to $1,000. Campus Body Salon, the best care in collision repair. Trust. It's hard to earn and sometimes even harder to find. If you live or work in downtown Phoenix, Matt Allen's Virginia Auto Service is celebrating over 20 years of award-winning service at the corner of 7th Street and Virginia. Recognized as one of the best service shops in the country, their customers have come to trust Virginia Auto Service for its A-plus rating by the BBB, two-year 24,000-mile warranties, and free transportation to and from your home or office. 20-plus years of earning your trust. Virginia Auto Service. They're serious about service. Who can you trust here in the Valley to repair your ride? This is Bumper to Bumper Radio. KTAR News on 92.3 FM. Well, welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I don't know about you, Matt, but I'm enjoying the weather. So far, so good. We've got time for a couple calls at 602-277-5827. Don't be shy. 602-277-KTAR. Matt, some text here that we got to get to. Uh, now you got to turn your microphone on if you want to. And rookie, work. rookie mistake over here. Look at this one. Leo's already getting some love. I see a text message that says, I use and capital love. <laughs> Campus Auto Body, so they are uh, they're a good body shop, fans. man. Family style body shop, very modern though too. So anyhow, one of these texts, uh, this person has a Honda Odyssey with a PO420 code that's going to be related to the catalytic converter, maybe some sort of catalytic converter efficiency issue, and then a P1738, which is a third gear pressure switch on a Honda Odyssey. Super, super common code as far as the transmission side of things. So I'll talk about that one, and then you can handle the cat catalytic converter code. So on the pressure switch code. A lot of times it's the switch, okay? There's pressure switches different for different clutch drums in the transmission, and the, the computer needs feedback from the transmission. It turns something on. It wants to see what happened. 
And so the switch could be bad, and also there could be there could be a pressure issue or hydraulic leak to that particular third gear issue. Internal. Now, did you say this was a model year 2000 with mm-hmm. 211,000 miles on it? 211,000 miles. Probably not the first transmission problem in that Odyssey. Honda Odyssey, that was right there in the class action lawsuit years for them. So, uh, yeah, maybe the third, the fourth, the fifth transmission. So, but, so- but I know this. We will we'll remanufacture a transmission for a Honda. Put all new switches in it, everything like that. The car will leave. It works great. You know, and it'll come back with a pressure switch problem in there. I'm like, I just bought that switch, and I just put it in there. How is it bad already? But it, it, it is a, an issue with Honda pressure switches. Right. That happens a lot. Well, and then there's the PE0420, and that's not the code what some of you think it is. That is a <laughs> that is a catalyst efficiency code. <laughs> so what we're talking about is the catalytic converter. Is it doing – does it have the ability to clean the exhaust as it's supposed to? There's a sensor, there's multiple sensors. There's an oxygen sensor before the catalytic converter and one after. So the two sensors are talking to each other and the computer, are not talking to each other. They're telling the computer what they see. And if they see that that catalytic converter is not working very hard, that's the efficiency code. But his question is, what should I do? We're talking about a 17-year-old car with 211,000 miles on it. I don't like to jump to conclusions. Let's just assume it needs a transmission overhaul and let's assume it needs a catalytic converter. That's Let's call it four to five thousand dollars of repair. Mm-hmm. Think, Dave? Yep. Yep. Now, do I keep it? Should I stay or should I go? Right? The old uh, no carries over here, thumb and kick the thing down the road. But we don't know. Maybe this thing's an EX with leather and it's all cherry. And the timing belt was just done at uh, power whatever. windows are in good shape. It's the power the, doors still work, power which is on a Honda works. Odyssey. That's a good thing. You know, maybe you still got some kids. You need to go a couple more years, and and then once you're out of the kids. You're going to get out of a van and maybe into a sedan. So maybe it makes sense to fix it, but look over the whole entire car before you make that, that decision. Right. Is there, is, there, is there something else coming up around the corner? So, And the other way I look at it, because I do, I do see people with vehicles in this kind of mileage, is that uh, they say, well, the value of the car and the value of the repair is worth fixing. So that equation matters if you're in the business of uh, buying and selling cars. But essentially, would you pay five grand for a car that you can drive for 30,000 miles over the next two years? Kasha, ten cents a mile, fifteen cents a mile for the next two years. You want to do it? Yeah, that that sounds reasonable, you know. And yeah. so they may, but you got to kind of look at the math differently to justify it or unjustify it. Because the car right now is really worth nothing. I mean, it's worth something to somebody. Maybe you can take it down to Rocky Point and drive it down there, where it doesn't matter for a while. But it's not going to get through emissions tests. So. So, yeah, just fix it and drive it, and then you'll get your money back still after two years. I got another text here. This person has a 2011 F-150 4x4 uh, 5-liter, uh, should be 5.4-liter. Uh, recently bought it, 25-foot uh, travel trailer. Should I change the transmission and differential fluid? Uh, should, I, should I be doing that? You know, I, I would say it is absolutely a good idea. I think transmissions are underserviced, you know. Sometimes we see transmissions that fail long before their first service is even recommended. Right. So there's there's a whole lot of hogwash in that service business. I know we service you know 15 transmissions a week. It's a, it's a regular thing we do at our shop. I still want to even if you know even if I bought I don't know if he just got the truck. I didn't. I wouldn't he quite. bought the travel trailer. Just oh, so now. he just got the truck or the travel trailer. I would still want to establish the baseline, whatever this mileage is. Today's the day where we're resetting zero on having this trailer. Even if the transmission fluid's in good shape, yeah, just double check. Maybe it's got the universal in. And you want to make sure it's got the exact fluid. And, and, and the one thing I tell people, because there's all kinds of people servicing transmissions, and, and some of them shouldn't be. So I say, you know, no transmission service is better than a bad transmission service. And I thoroughly agree with that because I see them done wrong, and I'm rebuilding transmissions where somebody double gasketed something and burned the transmission up, and the transmission died a slow death because of a poor service. So, yeah, I think if you're going to get it done, get it done right. It's not, it's not necessarily a car wash type of service. Where can I get... A standard wiring, uh, standard wiring harness for a '72 Chevelle. I, I was not reading that all the way and thinking wiring diagram. I was going to say the Phoenix Public Library is a good resource. They've got all the books and the subscriptions, and you can go on and and look them up and make photocopies. I'm not sure which ones you can check out. I think most of them are reference material. 
Uh, a lot of that, pre- lot of that pre- older stuff. I mean, there's companies out there like Painless Wiring. I mean, they <clears throat> they built a wiring harness yeah. for that car because there's people that just love Chevelles out there, and they're going to stick around. Those cars are getting thinner and thinner, the stock on them, thinner and thinner, and a little bit more bondoed and bondoed, but they're still out there. Well, in something like that, you know, something like uh, Elliott's Auto Electric, they're not one of our bumper to bumper shops, but they're well known in town. Uh, you know, this northeast Phoenix area, Cave Creek and Cactus, they may build something like that for you. That's when I suggest getting online, get to the forums and stuff. That's You're going to find some, some suppliers maybe there. Hey, Chris in Mesa, we're going to sneak you real quick because we're coming up toward the end of the show. Uh, 2007 Nissan Altima, how can we help you? Yeah, I'm having problems with it. Driving around town, it works just fine. But if you're driving it for more than 30 minutes or if you're on a freeway, or if you stop and go to accelerate, the RPMs will go to 3,000 miles, 3,000 RPMs, and then it uh, it doesn't take off like it should. Or if I'm cruising on a freeway, it'll act like it's losing power, and then a, a half second later I'll catch up and go again. Do you have, any, I don't know you have any check engine a, lights on at all? No check engine light on, no. Okay. So it's just a lack of power after long drives? Or will, Yeah, if I'm or, driving at more than 30 hmm. minutes, uh, 30, 45 minutes, it'll kick in on the highway. And then once I get off the freeway, I'll go to, say I go to the off-ramp, it'll not engage. It, it'll take a second or two. I didn't know, like, mm. bolt out of there like it won't two miles an hour. And I'm not sure on the year range, but do you know if your Altima has a CVT transmission? I'm not aware of that. I'm the, at least the second owner. I've owned it for about four months. Okay. I, I, I'm not sure. It's it's really hard to digest that with with that, that amount of information. But I do know on some of these CVT transmissions, as they heat up, they really start to have functionality problems. And and, and if that's in, in, and I don't know the model years, and there's different motor sizes and that kind of thing. But we could be having an issue like that. We could be having a problem with the throttle body where you get off the freeway and it just it goes into a fail safe and it's not working. So that one's really going to have to be digested. But no check engine lights. So that's where I'm saying, hey, what's going on here? Strange things happen with these cars lately. I mean, we're seeing higher and higher mileage. And, and when, as you get into the higher and higher mileage, you see weird things with wiring harnesses, chafing, because they, they never lasted this long before. So weird and strange problems as the cars age and mature more and more. For sure. Well, Bree, thanks for running the dials. We're glad that you could join us. If you're looking for a competent shop, even a body shop like Campus Auto Body and Tempe, you can find them at bumper to bumperradio.com. While you're there, be sure to like Matt and I on Facebook. The more friends we can get, the merrier. And uh, from all the shops at Bumper to Bumper Radio, have a great weekend.